It is Grant Preebs, one of the co-hosts of Etc. Thank you so much for joining us on this episode of Etc. Today, uh, John and I talk about the importance of extracurricular activities and how they can benefit the students um, going forward in life and uh, help them to create uh, lasting relationships. back to another episode of etc with myself Jonah Jungu and Grant Preeves. Uh, today we have an exciting episode for you guys today. We're going to mainly be talking about um, extracurriculars and just being involved in high school. We kind of talked about that a little bit on our last episode with uh, Gracie Willis who was our uh, student guest. Uh, but uh, before we do any of that Jonah you want to hop in the player profile just get right into it. Yeah absolutely. So mine you could say I'm maybe a little bit biased. Vikings came off a nice 34 to 31 win yesterday over the Green Bay Packers. It's always fun watching watching the Vikings beat the Packers. You would probably think it doesn't happen all that often, but it, every once in a while we want we beat them once last year, beat beat them again this year for their first matchup. Hopefully we'll get that second win later in the year. Um, but so for my player pro, player profile, I have Justin Jefferson, Vikings uh, wide receiver, number 18. Um, second year in the league, uh, coming out of LSU, he was the 22nd overall pick last year in the 2020 draft. Um, last year, he finished the year with 1,400 yards, breaking the rookie, single season rookie receiving record and um, six or seven touchdowns. This year, he's on pace to break all of his yards from last year. Through 10 games, he has 63 receptions, 944 yards, and six touchdowns. Only a touchdown away from his mark last year. Uh, with seven games remaining, uh, less than 500 yards to to go, um, and just his, the last couple of games, he's just been on a tear. He's just, uh, I think he's had over 120, over 130 yards the past two games. This week, I'm um, against the Packers. He had eight receptions, uh, two touchdowns, and 169 yards against the Packers. He was a huge force um, in leading the the Vikings to victory. Um, the Vikings are now. The, the win brought them up to five and five. They're back at 500. Um, and so, yeah, hopefully, I mean, there are several games back from the Packers in the division. I can't really see them catching up just because even though they beat the Packers, I still think the Packers are the better team. But um, for playoff standings and to potentially get a wild card, it, it was a, it was definitely a, a good game for, for the Vikings and as a Vikings. And it was a fun game to watch. Who's your player profile for the week? Nice. Well, before I get into that, I just have a quick question. So yeah. we're talking about, obviously, uh, the Packers and the Vikings play each other at least once a season. Before I ask the question, I assume that it just depends on the season, but how often do uh, the Packers and Vikings usually play or just teams in the same division typically? Is so the like- NFC North, each team, like the Vikings play the Bears, mm-hmm. the Packers, and the Lions twice a year. Same for the, like the Packers play – the Bears, Lions, and Vikings twice a year. Like, so within a division, like within the NFC North, each NFC North team plays each other team twice a year. And that's, and then, that's consistent. Yeah, every single year. It's always twice a year. And then, so like this year, the NFC North is playing the NFC West. So each, then we play each NFC West team once. Okay. And each AFC North team once. So this year, all like we, the entire division always plays a whole nother division. So every team in the North will play the 49ers, Rams, Seahawks, and Cardinals, and the Ravens, Steelers, Browns, and Bengals. And then there's a couple additional games where seeding is kind of, it's based on um, you play like one team from each other division um, that finished like the same rank in their mm-hmm. division, like respective to, to you. So, 
since there's five teams in a division, that means four. So <laughs> you play each team twice. So that's three times two. So six of your se- uh, six of your games in the season are interdivisional play. Correct. And then eight games would come from those other two divisions. Um, and then that leaves three. This year, the, the season expanded. They added a game. Yeah. And so it's now it went from 16 to 17. So two of those games come from you play the other two NFC, like the NFC um, South, I want to say, and NFC East. Yeah. Um, Gotcha. Like the Vikings this year played the – we played the Cowboys and who are we playing from the south? The Panthers, I want to say. Um, the, and then and then the the additional game this year for the Vikings at least was the Chargers. And gotcha. that, one, that one is pretty random, I think. I don't think there's much that goes into that, that game. Okay. Yeah, thank you. I just wanted to, like, understand if there was kind of like at least like a concrete rule for interdivisional play, so mm-hmm. – we got that. All right. So for my player profile, Kobe White, he plays for the Bulls. I've just in general, or at least lately, I've been trying to watch um, well, really all sports a little bit more. Obviously, I'm more of a baseball guy, but football is just I'll admit it's way more entertaining to watch on TV than baseball. And basketball's been pretty entertaining to watch as of late, too, especially the Bulls. So a little bit about Kobe White. He went to UNC. Um, he was drafted drafted seventh overall uh, in the 2019 draft by the Bulls. However, um, in the offseason last year, or I guess technically this calendar year, he had surgery on his left shoulder. And he's been out basically all season. I mean, it's only been 17 games, um, except for the last four games he's been able to play, luckily. Um, going to tonight, uh, they played the Pacers, I guess. Right now, technically, the game started at seven. Um, so last night was the first time he actually all season played over 11 minutes. So it's really no, the first time this season he's had any substantial playing time, and that was against the Knicks. So I got that right. He scored 14 points and actually made his first threes of the of the whole season, which was nice. So although honestly, 14 points isn't crazy. It's just it's more symbolic than actual performance based because you know he's been out, he's been recovering from an injury. So just from that, actually, you know, give us a pretty entertaining performance especially in the fourth quarter because that's when he scored the majority of the points. Um, that was fun to watch. Um, the Bulls are now 12-5. Uh, and five. They're tied for first in the Eastern Conference. And like I just mentioned, they're currently playing the Pacers. Losing by a lot, but hopefully they'll turn that around. Wait, really? What's the score? Uh, the score currently is 28-12. Pacers with the lead. Let's end the show. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, a lot, lot of game left. All right. Uh, so that's it for the player profile. There's a lot going on in sports. I'm sure we'll think of even more to talk about uh, down the road. Uh, but Johnny, you want to get right into the song of the week? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so for mine, I'm going with "Escape Plan" by Travis Scott. I guess technically, you can, you could. Uh, wrap it up with mafia as well um the two songs were released um simultaneously on november 2nd it was just two singles not part of any album uh i think if i'm not mistaken uh travis scott has an album in the works but obviously the the controversy with the with astro fest and all that it's probably going to delay that a bit um he's already had delayed shoe releases and obviously there's going to be a lot of um a lot of collateral damage that goes along with with what uh occurred at at his event um but nonetheless escape plan and mafia both very enjoyable songs in my opinion and i've enjoyed listening to them during for the past couple weeks during the month of november uh Uh, that's nice for you i don't um I don't like the songs. <laughs> I think they're really? very, I think they're extremely underwhelming. Um, Mafia is nowhere near as good as a, as Escape Plan, but I kind of wrapped them. To, I guess like they kind of go together just because. Yeah. But I I think Escape Plan is a good song. I, mean, I'll, I, I think I'll have to give it another chance because I only listen to it I think um, once or twice. Normally it takes me you know a, a little more listens than that to decide whether or not I like it. 
Um, so I guess I'll have to keep more of an open mind. Travis Scott does have an album. I think it's called Utopia. Obviously, it might be delayed because of things you just talked about. But for my song of the week, I think it literally dropped. It's just a single. It dropped on Sunday. It's called Yams, but with a Z because it's rap. So you got to spell things wrong uh, by, Mas- by Masego uh, featuring Devin Mor- Morrison. Um, Masego isn't really someone we've talked a lot about on the podcast. So just a little quick, uh, some fun facts about him. His real name is Micah Davis, but Masego is a cooler name. So I understand why he went with that. He's a Jamaican American singer. And musician, he's a big time sax player. He uses the saxophone in a lot of his music, as you'll hear if you listen to some of the song recommendations I have for him. So I discovered him, I think, in 2020 when he appeared on a song called Mystery Lady with Don Tolliver. Uh, some of you might know Don Tolliver is my favorite artist. So if, if he's on a song, I'm probably going to listen to it. And then just a few other song recommendations uh, uh, of songs by Masego. Uh, Tado or Tado, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Pretty Good and sure plenty. Tato. Or none of the above. He says Tado several times in the song, but Tado. Yeah, he does. Good and plenty. And then the last song is called Polygamy. So interesting um, title. So go and figure out the lesson of that one. Yeah, that's all I got for. Um, Saw the week. Before we get in the extracurricular activities, um, Jonah, do you want to talk about some of the current events? Because um, all, there, there's been a lot of pretty pressing and interesting things, although kind of sad in the news lately, uh, but nonetheless important. So you want to talk about that stuff? Yeah, absolutely. As you said, like they've been kind of heavy, heavy topics to talk yeah. about a lot of a lot of controversy, um, especially sur- surrounding. Very much so, yeah. Especially surrounding the uh the the verdict last week uh there's two trials going on i guess the written house the verdict is out he was acquitted on all five charges um you want to give listeners a summary just a little bit about uh what happened with Kyle and house in case they don't really understand the whole situation yeah absolutely so about a year ago i want to say a little over a year ago i think it was august of 2020 Rittenhouse, um, Kyle Rittenhouse was 17 at the time, um, was drove, he actually lived in Antioch, which is not too far from, from us, wow. um, uh, drove up to Kenosha. There were riots going on there. Um, I believe in the after it was the aftermath of the Jacob Blake shooting. I want to say, um, if I'm not mistaken and, um, <clears throat> the, there, there were riots going on um, and he ended up shooting three people, killing two. So he was on trial for, for their murders. Um, and he ended up being acquitted of all, all charges to be completely honest. The prosecution was a joke. I being as the prosecute, like that's completely impartial, whether or not you agree with the verdict or not. Um, you can't, yeah. You can't really disagree. It was, it was the prosecution was not doing either. I don't know. I'll just, I'll leave it at that. Whether yeah. it, doesn't, it doesn't really matter whether or not you agree with the verdict, but the prosecution definitely made it easy for the jury to um, yeah. find, him, find him not get guilty on those charges for sure. I think that's, I mean, obviously the actual verdict, the verdict is quite controversial, but I think that's one thing uh, most people can agree on. Is that the the prosecution uh, did not you know uh, do the best they probably could so yeah um and then yeah sorry additionally this week and I mean it was going it's been going on for weeks now um the Ahmad Arbery trials I shouldn't say it's tech he's not the one on trial he was the victim in in, in the horrible crime I will not hide my opinion on this one it it was clear as day it was murder and. Hopefully the the um, the prosecution will will fig- I think that the closing arguments were made today, so hopefully the jury will get this one right and those men will be sent to prison. So yeah. uh, 
What were what the details on that specific case again? Yeah, that one was a while ago. That was actually before the George Floyd situation um, earlier in 2020. So about a year and over a year and a half ago, I think it was either February or March of 2020. Um, he was, Ahmaud Arbery was um, running in Georgia. He was running in a neighborhood. Um, a couple men were in a truck, thought he had um, been a burglar and robbed some house. And they decided to take it into their own hands and make a citizen's arrest, which ended up in a confrontation and a shooting of an unarmed African-American man. Um, people always make the argument, oh, it shouldn't be a racial thing. But at the end of the day, that that's what it comes down to. You said unarmed, right? Unarmed? Yes. Okay. He was unarmed. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's pretty. Yeah, that, that's that one, I really don't think there should be much controversy. I'm sure there will be, but hopefully, like I said, hopefully the jury gets that verdict right. Controversy over the verdict, right? Not that what what happens pretty controversial, right? Well, I would say it's controversial, but I don't think there should be any argument as to who was in the wrong in this situation. Yeah, the action's controversial in terms of it even happening in the first place, but like, yeah, absolutely. And then, like, uh, going on top of that, it was last night, I think, uh, or just towards the late afternoon to last night, um, in Waukesha, there was that uh, red SUV. I don't know uh, in terms of, like, what the situation was, where, where they were coming from, but the the, the car, like, plowed through, um, like, a, a parade or in a crowd of people. I think it was a Christmas celebration parade, which was pretty um, horrific. I know the, the overall kind of... Uh, like taunt for the person or the people involved took, you know, quite a while, went pretty late into the night. I know uh, my cousin goes to a college in Wisconsin near Waukesha called Carol and her and all of her, everyone on campus had to go in the lockdown. So that was a pretty scary situation. Uh, but, you know, luckily she's safe and the people around her. So I'm pretty grateful for that. Uh, but definitely a scary, scary situation. Absolutely. So, um, I obviously kind of in the news, the news cycle right now, it's pretty gloom. Uh, it kind of just reminds you of, you know, we're living in the real world and, you know, bad and dangerous things can't happen. So you just got to be thankful for everything and always, you know, be looking out for one another. But now hopefully we're, we're going to transition into a little bit um, of more happy and upbeat news. Thanksgiving is right around the corner. And as of the date of recording this, we only have one more day of school until Thanksgiving break. So, uh, Joni, want to talk about your excitement for Thanksgiving break and maybe any plans you have? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, my family's coming to town, my mom's brother and, and his family. So my three cousins are coming to town from Duluth, Minnesota. So I'm definitely looking forward to that. It's always That's a good awesome. Time. Yeah, always a good time when they're able to come visit. And it's going to be nice to finally have a holiday together. I haven't had um, yeah. that since, I mean, with COVID and everything and Additionally, like with my mom um, being sick, not being able to travel, uh, it's like this is like our first holiday with um, like a our full fan. I guess not not everyone, but other than like my grandma, we haven't really had um, much family family time. Um, so it's it. I'm really looking forward to it. Um, a lot to be thankful for. Um, yes. like, like I said, like my mom being sick, but she's past that point. Um, so very thankful for that to to have a Thanksgiving um, with family and my mom being healthy again and yeah a lot a lot a lot to be thankful for. Do you have a favorite Thanksgiving dish? I think mine would actually be broccoli salad, which is weird, <laughs> but I do. That is probably my my favorite. How about nice. what about yourself? Do you have a favorite? Yeah, uh, I don't really know how popular this dish is or if you're even going to know what it is, but my mom makes this corn dish called corn souffle. You ever heard of it? I have not. I've heard it's of so corn. I've heard of, I've heard of a souffle. But well, not take souffle. those two ideas and put mm -hmm. them together. <laughs> no, it's really good, um, probably because it's sweet. So I'm always a big fan of sweet things. But also, obviously, like turkey, mashed potatoes, and stuffing. I'm just a huge fan of Thanksgiving in general. Uh, my family, we're just having Thanksgiving with her grandma, so it should be a nice kind of small Thanksgiving, something kind of new. 
uh, that's something I'm looking forward to. And then uh, my older brother, Callan, who we might be having on the podcast very soon, um, will be back uh, from college. So that'll also be exciting. Nice. Um, yeah, but um, besides that, Jonah, you kind of want to get into the main topic of the day, uh, which is just the importance of extracurricular activities. And do you want to talk about what you're involved at here at Prairie Ridge High School? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, kind of going right off of that topic of Thanksgiving and having a lot to be thankful for. I'm super thankful for the opportunities that uh, Prairie Ridge has given myself and all of the students that are uh, lucky enough to walk through um, the PR doors each and every day. Um, I have... I've been involved. I like to think I'm very involved. Um, I, I do a lot of, whether or not I'm involved in a lot of different things, I'm always yeah. very busy. Um, so I, I definitely like That's to stay good. involved. Um, more recently, the majority of my time is taken up by theater activities. Um, I'll get to those in a minute, I guess. Starting from freshman year, um, I was in marching band. Um, to be completely loved. That is not the words I was going <laughs> to be completely honest. It wasn't my favorite, um, but I, I tried it. Um, That's important. I, That's what's important. I made a lot of really, really good connections, friendships that I'm sure will last a long time. Um, and uh, have, just having that, that connection to some upperclassmen going into freshman year was super, super helpful. Um, just to have a friendly face to see in the hallway, having an upperclassman that you know, that you know you can count on, that can be a really helpful thing as an underclassman, as a freshman, uh, going into yeah. a big school, um, not knowing. I guess, I, I mean, I knew a lot of people just because I still, there were still people that had known my brother and um, I just, I knew most of the freshman class. But regardless, it's it's nice to get involved early on. And so you make those connections early on and have those people to look up to. Um, so yeah, I did marching band freshman sophomore year. Um, I ended up being done after sophomore year just because I'd found other things to, that took up a lot of time as well. But it was definitely still a good experience. I I, I love played the drums, band. right? Yep, I was on the drum line. Um, I I still really enjoy playing the drums, but um, it just just wasn't my top priority anymore. So I decided to take a step back from that. Um, but freshman year, I was involved in, I think the main club that I did was probably Eyes Open PR. Um, I did that freshman, sophomore year. Um, then I also played baseball freshman year. Yeah. It was horrible. Um, so you had a walk, you had a walk off though, right? I don't know if that counts as a walk off. It was it was a walk off slaughter rule, so I guess you could call it a walk off. But did that that was did we celebrate that? Like we celebrated it as a walk off, yeah. But I think that was just because it was me and people couldn't believe that I actually like put the ball in play. But thinking back, honestly, on that because obviously I was there too. The other team might have thought that was messed up for us to like be celebrating them getting slaughtered. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it was Dundee Crown and the slaughter rule was like 10 runs or something and we were up by nine already. And then I, I hit a single to knock someone. Yeah, that, that, you, good contact them. though. Hey, it, yeah, whatever, whatever, whatever works. But yeah, I mean, baseball, even though I, to be quite honest, I, I, I kind of sucked, but I made some of the greatest connections that that have lasted me all four years throughout high school uh coach peck even to this day is there's not many people that i have more respect for um in the building than than coach peck same goes with coach jay well, yeah, uh, for coach, sure. coach cozy who's now at and now at uh carrie grove is still someone that yeah that I, he helped us uh, start this podcast he did yeah exactly and i don't i think without having that baseball connection i don't know if we would have if, if it would have worked out that way. So even though baseball itself didn't last me all the way through high school, making those connections, having that, that close team bond with a lot of those guys yeah. has lasted, has lasted throughout, throughout high school. Like I, I said, a couple weeks ago when we had coach Jay on, like I don't play, I don't play baseball anymore, but having that relationship with coach Jay has lasted to this day. Like I still, 
I still look up to Coach Jay. He's still a mentor to me and someone I, I, I know that I have in the building that I can go to if I have a problem. Same thing with Coach Peck. If I know that if there's any, if I ever have an issue, those are the guys that, those are the, the men that I can, that I know I can go to and they're, they're always going to be there for myself and, I mean, any student in the building. So having that connection through baseball, even though I don't play anymore, um, that was, that's been huge for me throughout high school. Um, I guess going further um, into what I'm more involved in now, sophomore year, I, I did them. I mean, I've been in choir all four years. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't do the musical freshman year um, just because I was busy with other things with baseball, obviously freshman year. Um, but sophomore year, I decided to audition for the musical. That was an excellent experience. Um, made once again, made a lot of really good connections with some of the seniors that year. And, and, than the people that were juniors and obviously the kids that were my age as well. Um, so, and then I did the musical again last year and again this year, and I've done a couple plays since then. And so theater is definitely my main, that's one of the main things yeah. I do. Um, I think more so than anything, like I- I've grown as an actor, of course, but the, the team, there's still, even though it's not a sport, there's, still 100 percent a team aspect to to the theater program that that i think a lot of people may not realize um but i it that's helped me a lot i've made a ton of connections i've i've made some really really close friends through that um as well as having a strong relationship with mr jensen and mr d um over over the past couple years um making being in madrigals as well which is more singing focused but still having that that team aspect where we all have to rely on each other to, to do our work outside and, and then come together. We just got done with Mads dinners uh, last weekend. So yes, it was yes. Nice. I was there. Well, not at the end, but on Friday. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And uh, so it was nice to like, that was something that I was in Mads last year, but wasn't able to put it all together. So having that dinners this year and really put it all together was, was really nice. It was rewarding. Um, to see it all kind of come to fruition, all the the hard work that I've been putting in for four years and now finally getting to have a real Mads dinners was was really nice for myself and I know all my peers as well. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know how comfortable you are just kind of uh, like public speaking or just being on stage in general, but like I'd imagine like when you're doing that kind of, when you're performing in front of people, it's probably a little bit easier and more enjoyable when you're doing it like with your friends because – Obviously, um, putting on a production is a lot different than putting uh, or just making a speech like in a class or public speaking. But that's like me personally, like the closest thing I have to compare to it because you're just talking in front of people. But like I know like when you have a group presentation, you feel a little more comfortable than when you're on your own. Is that kind of similar when you're like putting on like a player or a musical? You just, it feels a little better to be in front of people uh, when you have your friends and stuff. Yeah, definitely. I mean... I guess for me, so sophomore year, I didn't really have a big part. I had one line. Um, and so I guess delivering that one line, <laughs> I think my line was, I think it's Moose. Anyone who knows the the plot of Crazy for You might remember that line. But um, like that one wasn't super nerve wracking for me because it was one line throughout the entire show that I had to worry about. Yeah. And then last year um, in Curtains, I had a definitely had a much bigger part but um, I, like obviously having that show be filmed instead of with a live audience uh, made it a lot different. So I honestly still haven't had that full experience um, of having like, like a, a bigger part with a full live audience, but um, nonetheless, like, yeah, I guess to answer your question, yes. Like yeah. having, having, a whole cast behind you like kind of takes away that nerve because you know all of those people like have your back like you might have a solo but at the end of the day like everyone on that stage wants you to do well no one is like rooting against you um and not that when you're giving a speech that that's really ever the case but yeah uh, i think giving a having giving a speech in a classroom is is a little bit different just because you're up there for you to get your own grade 
And um, like, like we talked to, to Gracie, like the difference between her competing for herself and competing for a team, like when you're in a classroom giving a speech, you're up there for yourself just to give a speech and get a good grade. Um, but when you're, when you're on the stage um, doing a, even if you're doing a solo, you have everyone in the cast, everyone in the cast has your back. Everyone in the cast wants you to, to do well. Yeah. Um, that's, that's a comforting feeling knowing that everyone has your best interest at heart for sure. Yeah. I just got like one really just quick interest question. It's not necessarily related to the theme just before we get on to mine. Um, so when you're, I've always just wondered when you're on stage um, performing, how closely do people like actually stick to their scripted lines like in terms of like being word for word accurate or like, do you guys normally kind of, I mean, not necessarily improvise, but kind of like, you know, deviate from the original script usually when you're performing. So for like the musicals and the plays, it, it is word for word there, unless like, there's no improv. Once you get up on stage, you can't just like, obviously if you're in a show and you forget a line, it's you're not, you can't like run off stage and look at the script. You, you'll, you need to do what you can to get through the scene and like finish the scene. But unless the director, unless like Mr. Jensen hates a line, the way it's written and actually changes it, it's really, it's pretty much just word for word. Okay. That's what it's written. I mean, I, I, I remember maybe sophomore year, I was watching a play. I'm pretty sure at PR and it was actually, it was Matthew Savas who we had on the podcast earlier in the year. I think he was doing a sword fight with somebody and the sword fell off some it fell off stage or something and they had, hmm. to, impro- they had to improvise and just um just fight with like something else i think it might have been i don't know like a cloak or something but i mean it was obviously not a sword but it was kind of funny to see them kind of think fast and be able to improvise like that yeah and provide some comedic relief so mm-hmm. all right on to my activities Um, or and like the impact they've had on me. Um, Obviously, uh, I also play baseball, or I still play baseball. I played it freshman year through senior year. Um, Coach Jay and Coach Peck and all the coaches at PR, um, you know, I've made great relationships with, and they're definitely, um, you know, friendly faces, and there's people I can go to whenever I want. Um, A point I want to make about, you know, just an activity like baseball or really any sport or something, like a musical or magical where you, it's like a, uh, like almost an everyday type of commitment. It's like, well, people, especially underclassmen who are worried about being able to make friends. Uh, well, a uh, one really good way to make friends is to literally join an activity where you're forced to be around the same people five days a week. Um, so if you ever, if you want to make friends, just join a sport or the musical. Um so, yeah, that's a little something on that. And then also I'm um, in National Honor Society, uh, which Joan is too. Um, that's just more of an outlet of uh, just gives us a way to give back to the community uh, through volunteer work and service projects and things like that. Um, that's probably less friendship route because the actual meetings are less often. They're only once a month. But that's just more of a way to actually give us an outlet to be able to give back to the community uh, and uh, be recognized for it, which is important. And then also I do news team and write for the uh, newspaper. Um, I mean, that's what this podcast is. It's literally because of news team. So um, if you're listening to this podcast right now as an underclassman or just any student at PR and you think it's cool, uh, well, if you, can, if you join news team, you'll be able to do whatever you want. So, um, uh, you know, that's another benefit of um, joining clubs and things of that nature. And then something that's a kind of, uh, well, it started during COVID and has uh, probably been one of the bigger parts of my life is my friend Syke and I, we made the investment club, which I've talked about a few times um, on the podcast. Um, that's given me the opportunity to one, um, be a leader and hold a leadership role and meet new people and especially with sponsors and, you know, just, uh, you know, having to learn things like, you know, running a schedule and having, um, you know, a plan and meeting with your um, adult sponsors and things like that. Um, but it's also given me an opportunity to pursue my interest, obviously, um, investment, investing in business is something I'm interested in. 
So I made a call for it because it forces me to learn more about it. Uh, so if you're for, if you force yourself to learn about what you're interested in, you're going to find that you um, definitely create a greater understanding for it and things like that. All right. So that's pretty much it in terms of my activities. I'm not going to go too into depth about it because I could literally talk for hours about them. But I just say my main points are for underclassmen listening to the podcast, join activities, one, because uh, it's a great way to make friends. Um, two, it helps you, uh, you know, um, greater understand your interest or discover new interests you might not know um, you might have a passion for. And then three, um, it's great for college and it also um, can build a work ethic and um, just give you things to do throughout the day because like we talked about sports and musical and magicals are like multiple times a week commitments. So uh, that's all I got. Johnny, you got any final thoughts on um, why extracurriculars are important before we get into the uh, slow take and uh, for the end of the episode? Yeah, absolutely. L- like you said, like there is no better way to, to make connections, make friendships, uh, find adults in the building that, that you can count on than to get involved in, in uh, whether it be a, a sport, um, the musical, uh, any activities, any clubs that, that you can think of. Um, I've said it countless times. I feel like I've said it on every episode so far this year. If you have an interest, there is a way to have a club centered around it. If, even if it doesn't exist right now, you can make it happen. The business club didn't exist two years ago, but Grant and Syak had an interest for it and they made it happen. And now it's now it's an, a fully recognized club. They're able to compete in, what is it, DECA? Yeah, DECA. Yeah, and so they they found an outlet for something that they had a passion for and that's going to help them uh, in, in, at the next level in college, uh, it, like wanting to pursue business. So like there's, there is an outlet for any interest that any, any person listening to this may have. Um, I know it sounds, it sounds like maybe I'm oversimplifying it, but at the end of the day, um, if, if there's something you're interested in, you can, you can find a way to pursue it. And additionally, finding that outlet is going to help you find people with similar interests to you. Um, you're going to make friends you're, and you're going to make relationships that um, will last you throughout high school and, and hopefully yes. beyond that as well. Absolutely. Speaking of relationships, that brings us right into our slow take of the episode. Um, I know Valentine's Day and things of that nature are still quite a far ways away, but I, I was, uh, you know, browsing the internet as one does, um, from time to time. (laughs) And I found this fun and slow take. Uh, so Jonah, here's the question. Uh, which would you prefer a great, a great love relationship that lasts a year or a mediocre uh, or a mediocre relationship that lasts your entire life? This is a pretty tough question. It is a tough question. You go first. Oh, wow. You had to turn that on me because you know I can't be like, no, you should go because that would disrupt the entire flow of the episode. Um, <laughs> this is tough. Well, honestly, probably a mediocre or, or, well, this is a hard question. Can we can we assume that like after the great love relationship is over, uh, like you won't find anything like as good as that the rest of your life, or will you find nothing the rest of your life? Well, I don't know because if you find, I feel like it's got to be all or nothing. Because we don't even know the question that we're asking. <laughs> How about be, this? Be, I feel like it has to be all or nothing yeah. because if you find a great love and then a then you could just have a mediocre. Yeah, one, yeah. and then okay. Yes. So it's either you have the one great relationship for one year and no relationships the rest of your life or just like an okay one for your entire life. Okay. Um, I probably honestly would have to go with the okay relationship, like the mediocre one. Uh, notice how I'm avoiding saying that word because I can't pronounce it right right now. So just the okay, <laughs> the okay relationship because, um, you know, there's nothing wrong with being average, you know. Um, relationships can be tough half of them end in divorce uh, or that's what I hear 
I um, feel like that's got to be an inflated number. There's no well, way. Reg- that. Well, that, well, that's 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 the number that's thrown around these days. Really? Uh, um, because you know, even though the relationship's gonna be just okay, well, first of all, I want to be with someone the rest of my life. I don't want to just be alone after one great relationship because you're just gonna be alone and thinking about that one girl or guy for the rest of your life. So I'd say, um, just the okay one, um, because. Even though um, over time, it'll be average, right? If you look at it through the, t- you know, in retrospect, <laughs> it'll have its ups. You know what I mean? There'll be some exciting moments, you know, albeit brief. It'll also have its downs. Well, everything has its downs in life. But I'd say as someone who probably wants to get married, um, have uh, a happy relationship or a, de- or a decent relationship, let's keep the standards low <laughs> for the rest of my life. I'll go with the mediocre one and uh, for the long run, how about you? Oh gosh. I had a long time to think about it and I'm no closer to making my decision than I was when you asked me the first time. It's tough, but I'm pretty confident with my answer. Yeah. Somebody is better than nobody. You got to have a partner. What if, your life somehow ended after that one year, though. I'm not thinking what you're thinking. <laughs> I can already tell. That would be... No, you you live a substantial amount of time afterwards. I That's... have to? Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> That's not in the prompt, though. Well, neither is the... You die immediately after. <laughs> okay, you're right. I, I hate to be this tough. question. This is a stupid, dumb question, but ouch, ouch. That's if fine. I have to answer. I guess I would agree with you, but it's you know a- I'm the expert on relationships. Let's go. Really, out of the two of us, that is interesting. We'll, we'll <laughs> talk about that in another episode, but let's leave That's- that for now. Okay. All right. Uh, well, we're all, Joan and I are going to be premiering a new podcast where we're solely giving relationship advice second semester. So stay tuned for that. Um, well, no, I'm kidding. Jonah hey, would Jonah know, would maybe. complete Jonah wouldn't be able to give great advice as me, but yeah. Um, but honestly, anyone listening, if you want relationship advice, come to either of us. Um, as you can see from the mastering of the answering of this question. We got it down pretty good. Um, any closing thoughts on the episode, Jonah? Uh, we probably got to end it soon before I say something I regret. <laughs> <laughs> um, I Yeah, I just hope what people take away from this episode is not from the slow take and what we talked about uh, right before that. Um, <laughs> just, yes. just the importance of getting involved, making connections, finding... Uh, making friendships, making forming lasting relationships with with your peers and and teachers as well, and um, overall just being thankful for the opportunities that we have. I know people just love to complain, um, but I, okay. as, as <laughs> what? you just they, put that in there, people love to complain. No, I wasn't done. Okay, keep going. Done. People love to complain, but um, we are super lucky to to wake up every day in Crystal Lake, Illinois, yeah. um, and, and, and go to Prairie Ridge high school, um, be given the opportunities that we are, um, and have so many, so many outlets to, to explore different interests and, uh, make new friends and f- form lasting relationships that truly I think can last a lifetime. Yeah. Um, join clubs. Uh, don't be like the person in the slow take. Don't opt for either, the good short term or the bad uh, long term join the club. So then you can have the great long-term relationships, have the best of both worlds. Uh, That's it. Thanks for watching. And this has been, et cetera. We're signing off. Thank you. Join us on our next episode when we are joined by a PR alum and current college student. Um, And we will be talking about just the differences between high school and college and how that how uh, their time in college has helped them develop as a person